officially come back to make a second part of your favorite series. Um, how have you guys been doing? So uh, let me put on my headphones. I'm talking way too loud into the he- to the microphone. I barely realized that. Yeah, I've come back to watch uh, some more short films, and uh, apparently. Uh, some people got offended and they thought like I was actually bashing these short uh, films, which I really was not. I, I didn't want it to be taken as that. So I guess I apologize, but uh, if you're offended, sorry you're, you were offended. This is the comedy part of YouTube. Um, so you're probably in the wrong spot for watching YouTube videos. I'm sorry, but you just are. So uh, yeah, uh, I just want to say that really quick. I mean, no disrespect to these creators, to these uh, Navajo directors. We're just watching this together and having fun. And I like to, you know, talk about these videos jokingly, but also I don't mean to disrespect them. So as of right now, I have uh, three videos, I think. These aren't actually going to be like horror. We are actually going to view some serious ones. We'll just kind of like dive into the comments as well. And we'll also, uh, I'll also kind of just say what I want to say after the video. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, and I don't really want to make the intro too long, which I probably already did. Um, okay, I'll stop talking. <laughs> so this first one is called Eli, Ultra Running in Navajo Nation. Uh, and it's it was uploaded by Pentagonia. I think that's how you say it. I hope I'm saying it right Patagonia and this one says as a rancher growing up in the rugged northeast corner of the Navajo Nation with no electricity or running water Eli Netsosi learned through years of work what it meant to rely on discipline and endurance. Now he relies on the same skills, running long distances, striving every day, in his words, to be better than he was the day before. A Pentagonia Films production directed by Chris Malloy. Malloy, I think that's how you say it. Um, yeah, so I guess just obviously about a rancher. Um, and it talks about his life and they just kind of follow along with him. And I know it, has to, it all has to deal with like running. Uh, that's what I know so far um, and from what I've seen from the short film um, All right, I just I hope that the the this these films and this film in particular uh, isn't copywritten so I Am willing to take a risk on that <laughs> Okay, Pentagonia films I think that's a uh, Navajo Mountain, isn't it? My grandfather used to wake us up very early, around about four o'clock in the morning, and we'd all go running. Very early in the morning is when the gods pass through. You want them to be able to hear your voice. Eli. <clears throat> I was raised here pretty much have a whole lifestyle, you know, working sheep, cattle, no modern day conveniences, no running water, no electricity. Being self sufficient, there's ups and downs. We have to get the job done. Running was just part of the responsibilities that he had, and I think that's where he developed his running skills. You know, as a kid, I grew up on horseback, you know, always riding horses. Going after the sheep, you know, it's kind of like the kid's job is to follow the Sometime sheep Sometimes when they do they that, they clip them the hooves. You had to run something. Kind of, kind of is weird you know, to see that. getting away from you. I wonder if that actually hurts. No, it shouldn't hurt the horse. Sport, They've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> you know, like the whole horseshoeing thing. In the year the 2010, nails. I took my dirt bike out for a spin that day. I made the foolish decision to go without a helmet. Somehow wiped out, busted my head open. I think I was in a coma for the next, about the next month. You know, it was pretty tough, you know, relearning how to walk, how to chew, how to talk again. A couple of years down the road, I was 
diagnosed with epilepsy and you had to be told how you're gonna live now. Yeah, I bet, th I bet that is hard. Eli was prescribed anti-seizure medications for his epilepsy, a common side effect and de is depression. Yeah, it's scary. I remember that day clearly. You know, I woke up early in the morning. I couldn't sleep whatsoever. I was feeling a bit stressed. I figured I'd just take a short walk, you know, like a morning hike. And I was halfway Ooh, down the road, and I realized that's eh, nice. I might as well pick up pace and that's then, you know, went to a jog and eventually jogged all the way home. You know, I loved it so much. It was so stress relieving. The next day again, I started doing it consistently. Three weeks later, I found out there was a half marathon that was going to be hell, so I signed up. I managed to finish the race. A few injuries from that race, but you know, I was still 100% committed. That arch back there, that looks crazy. <laughs> right there, that arch, you can barely see it in the corner. That's crazy. Being a rancher, you know, you always had that mentality to never give up. We know how to get things done, and you apply that same mindset to running. <clears throat> you know, I don't have the luxury of a coach or, you know, somebody to train with. You know, all my training is done on my own. Yeah, you can have to Changed train by yourself. Marathon to full marathons and eventually gone to ultra marathons. How long is a 50K? I really don't know, to be honest. I don't know my, my Ks and the miles. It's kind of confusing a little bit. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot for not knowing that. <laughs> I wonder if the camera crew actually, like, followed... Well, I, I bet so. <laughs> I bet that they did follow him throughout the whole entire run. Because again, I was going to say, I bet they followed him all the way through the run. I wasn't competing for a medal for the podium. It's quite obvious. No, I was running for the experience and for personal growth. If you're constantly chasing after the hard things, you're going to eventually So that's eventually five hours? Going after. That's crazy. I'm like only running for like 30 minutes and I'm like way tired. We asked him why way he tired. Make us run because it's almost like suffering. It meant for us to develop so that we're strong in heart and mind and the more you run the stronger you become yeah in our culture yeah you know running has always been the main important thing to us it does like a lot for your health like your you know not only your physical health but also your mental health and your spiritual health and I think that's why I picked up running as well is because it helped me get things out of my head and it helps my mind flowing a little bit easier, if that makes sense. I've heard this somewhere. It was from a video. Uh, it was, this Navajo guy said that um, we were always taught to keep running um, because, what was it? Um, running is important because you need to outrun your enemies or something like that. And I guess during like that long walk period um, back in the 1860s uh, for the Navajos, the elders or the older people will always tell their children like, you gotta just keep running no matter what because you gotta outrun your enemies. I guess it worked for some of those uh, children who were outrunning their enemies and stuff. Luckily, I don't have any enemies to run away from, but you just never know, you know? So, the comments read, Pentagonia continues to blow my mind. Such an amazing company. This is exactly the kind of ath athlete slash person, person, person who deserves sponsorship and support. So inspiring, thank you. More native people need to be uh, sponsored um, and deserve to get their uh, stories on these kind of uh, channels and these kind of websites and it really inspires like a lot of uh, 
you know, a lot of their people and a lot of other native people. So yeah, I, I think that's uh, more stories should come out like that. Thank you, Pentagonia, for portraying indigenous perspectives. Uh, this was really great. It really was. Logan, totally, you nailed it there. Right, right, awesome. <laughs> Locker Thompson, three years ago. What a powerful film. I live near the Navajo Nation, and my family has roots tied to, to this great people. Well, to these great people, I think he was trying to say. Thank you, Pentagonia, for showing the splendor of Navajo country and the strength of its people. So... On to the next short film, and this one says A Visit with Susie Yazi short documentary. Uh, currently has over 1,000 views, uh, uploaded on October 17th, 2016. Uh, worldwide short films, A Visit with Susie Yazi short doc doc <laughs> documentary, documentary. So it looks like this doesn't really have that much traction, uh, now that I think of it. Uh, yeah, I thought I had more traction than this. I don't really know what it is. Um, apparently, uh, these people go and visit Susie Yazi. <laughs> okay, I guess we should get started then. A visit with Susie Yazi. Monument Valley. Yep. A female Hogan. Look like a male hogan. Oh. Susie Yazi, who resides in Manya Valley, is considered to be the most photo photographed Navajo in the world. Throughout the years, Susie has invited thousands of visitors into her home. Uh, a traditional Navajo hogan to demonstrate the art of rug weaving along with other crafts. Okay, I was trying to finish that before like it disappeared. <laughs> okay, so she's a crafty person. She continues to share the Navajo way of life with travelers from all over the world. So yeah, they come and visit her. We are just here to ask you some questions. Okay. What is your name? Should I be comment commentating? I don't know. Where were you born? I was born here in Monument Valley. <laughs> we moved from here and there. Before we moved here, we used to live by the arch arches. Then we moved here. Or so then we moved here. Which arches is she talking about? I wasn't sure where I was born. I might have been born near the arches. Ask her what's her, um, how she stays so young. <laughs> how do you stay so young? <laughs> Maybe because they work a lot and do a lot of chores. <laughs> Her sheep on foot. <laughs> That's what our grandparents did too. But also rode horses. I could not ride a horse. That would be so challenging, I'd imagine. Did she know, um, like John Ford or John Wayne? <coughs> did you know any movie stars like John Wayne? John Wayne. I knew John Wayne. <laughs> and I had a part in one of the movies he made. Jeez. That's the movie I was in. I like it. I like all my visitors. That's sweet. <laughs> How long have you been weaving? 
I started waving when I was 15. I heard this type of old school weaving is pretty challenging, honestly. Is this old school? No, I think weaving's all. I don't know. I don't really know my weaving. But looks like she does it old school. So. Did you know your pictures are everywhere throughout the world? Yes. So my pictures are floating far away. <laughs> Out into the inner web. Could you tell us about the clothing that you're wearing? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I make my own clothes, my skirt, my shirt. Jeez, crazy. <laughs> Grandma's all blinged out, huh? <laughs> and she's rolling. That'd be pretty cool, though, to make your own, your own clothing. Did you know Mr. Golden? You did personally know him. He's Mr. Golden. He always brought us loaves of bread. He took care of us pretty good with the groceries. We used to ride horses to the Golding training post to see the Goldings. Wait, Goldings is an actual person? I didn't know that. Usually it was an, an overnight trip. One day trip to go out there. I didn't know that. Is Goldings an actual person? <laughs> and one day to go back. Can you tell us what you're weaving right now? I'm just weaving. There's different kinds of weaving. That's hardcore. <laughs> This takes less counting and that takes more. Oh, I bet. I bet that's a lot more. <laughs> Every rug is different. Wow. This one is harder to weave. That all just looks confusing. I cannot imagine how long that takes. <laughs> That's crazy. How many Navos don't know about the designs? Or how to weave the rug? How many rugs have you woven? <coughs> Over a thousand in her lifetime, probably. <laughs> it's hard to tell. I lost <laughs> count. <laughs> I'm a small when I survey. Maybe even over a thousand. Like, I mean, maybe over, maybe like five thousand. Over five thousand, probably. Over nine thousand. Yeah, I'm trying to bring up an old meme. <laughs> this came from Black Sheep. And this white. This is mixed white and black to make a gray wool. Did she shear the wool herself? Yeah. Yes, I carded and spun the wool and made all these yarn balls. I use a red dye to make this red yarn. Hey, <clears throat> we get to see some weaving in action. Sick. I think that thing's made to push down all the yarn or something. Is it? I think so. I don't really. <clears throat> I don't really know. Ah, crazy voice. I don't know why my voice is so dry today. Okay, 
Today, the Navajo and the Diné still practice the traditional crafts that have been passed down for generations. Uh huh. I don't even know how many people, you know, weave rugs nowadays. I mean, I know some people. I mean, family members. Just some, though. Not everyone. <laughs> Special thanks to Susie Yazi. <laughs> we all gotta have a Susie Yazi in our lives, am I right? Dennis Sosi. Juanita Big Man. Big Man. Okay. I probably shouldn't make fun of people's names. I I apologize for that. That was very enlightening. And I want to go see her. Oh, yeah, you should probably go visit her. Um, yep, eight months ago. <laughs> Haida, oh, she, she is beautiful. I think she's supposed to, I think she was trying to say she is beautiful or something like that. Sure, yeah, she looks really, really freaking young. <laughs> and I don't think, did it tell like how old she was? Let's see, oh yeah, the thing I want to search up, Golding. Uh, yeah. So let's just look at this. Golding's history. Harry Golding was a sheep uh, trader looking for a new business opportunity and a place to call home. In the early 1920s, Harry and his wife, Leon, whose nickname was Mike, what? visited Monument Valley and were enamored with the area. Although Monument Valley had once been part of the Paiute Indian Reservation, the reservation located and areas of land opened up for sale. Uh, that's kind of messed up, isn't it? Uh, the Goldings jumped at the chance to purchase a substantial plot of land in Monument Valley and quickly set up a trading post. So wait, it was, it was named after Mike Golding, his wife, or Harry Golding? Or both of them, I guess, probably? And when I said that was messed up, maybe not after all. I mean, I guess Navajo supported it at that time, so maybe it was messed up. And he also brought, like, uh, goods to uh, the Indians or natives around that area. So maybe it's not as bad, but uh, I'm not really going to speak my part too much on it because I'm going to get in trouble, <laughs> probably. Um, I won't take any sides, um, I'm going to say unbiased towards this situation. What do you guys personally think about this situation? I'm curious to hear you guys aside and maybe I might uh, form an opinion, but as of right now I'm just going to stay off the subject, but I mainly just wanted to read the history of Goldings and how it was set up, so I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about it. So. Uh, do tell me about it and educate me a little bit. But yeah, I think this is more of like, uh, I just want to react to more serious videos. Uh, like, I don't know, just talking about our people and seeing their message and all that good stuff. So, uh, I just want to see what they were, what they had to say. And next time, I guess I'll try to find funny videos maybe, or we might react to another cooler video that I found. Well, they're all cool, but like I found... Uh, another cool Navajo video that we might react to. And still, again, I'm still trying to look for short, uh, any indigenous, any Navajo, any Native American, any Alaskan short films uh, that I really want to re review and we'll kind of take a look at with you guys. I'm trying to find those types of videos still. And if you guys know of any, please recommend them to me. I hope you guys really did enjoy this video. And if you did, why don't you give this video a big like. And uh, if you guys want to watch the short films or these videos, then I will leave them linked in the description below. I hope you guys can join me on this journey, uh, on my YouTube journey, and as we keep growing this family. Um, yeah, I mean, it's free. I don't know why you guys aren't subscribing. I'm gonna wait here for a while until you guys click that subscribe button. 
Okay, cool. Did it hurt? I don't think so. <laughs> Make sure to stay positive and be the awesome people that you are. I'll see you guys in the next video. Biology, my awesome people. <laughs> I promise that was the chair. That was not me. See, I'll see. Yeah, I got to get a new chair. This one kind of sucks. <laughs>